Yo, what up everybody? Today we're going to be reviewing Elden Ring. Um, I have spent 50, 60 hours playing Elden Ring. I've beaten the main game, I've beaten Melania, and a done a bunch of side stuff. I have not done everything, not even close. This game is so huge, but I've definitely played enough, I think, to give a pretty thorough review and, and my thoughts on it. So first and foremost, I f***ing loved this game, man. Um, the open world Dark Souls thing just works phenomenally. And they, they cut out the bullshit, too. They were like, yo, we're giving you a horse right away. We're giving you fast travel right away. We're giving you all these uh, sights of grace right away. And you can just warp everywhere super easily. I really, really loved that. Because Souls games are notorious for being really obnoxious with stuff like that. Even in Dark Souls 1. You don't even unlock fast travel for like half the game. I think in Dark Souls 3 they give it to you right away. But they just went for it and were like, yo, we're going to give you all this convenience. Now the game starts off in classic Souls fashion where you wander off. You get murdered by a super OP boss, but you were supposed to die anyways. And then you wander into the open world. Uh, and then they throw the tree sentinel at you who whoops your ass. And that was such an amazing way to start the game. And then I quickly found out... What really makes this game shine is how they encourage you to do anything you want. You can spend five hours trying to beat that tree sentinel with your starting weapon, or you can just say, f*** that guy, and keep on going. And by keep on going, I mean go one of like a, a million ways that you can go. You don't have to go any way. You can literally go north, east, south. West, I don't know. If there's any direction you can just point your camera and go. And that's kind of one of the beautiful things about Elden Ring is that if you're ever stuck, like you find a boss, he's super hard, he's kicking your ass, and you're like, man, I feel really underleveled, or I feel like I'm not ready for this. You just leave. You just get the hell out of there, and you come back later. Because there are like infinite things for you to do, man. Nooks and crannies, caves, catacombs, everywhere. Bosses tucked away. Cool enemies, items, literally everywhere. Now, to give a full and thorough review of Elden Ring, I feel that it is essential that you disconnect from the internet specifically. The Soulsborne community has a lot of dumbass motherfuckers who, like, kind of try to ruin the experience for other people, but you have to remember, like, it's kind of that Twitter mentality. It's like that with everything, not just Souls. But if you go on Twitter and listen to people, they're going to try and ruin your day. And I made a couple meme videos about it, like, you have to play Elden Ring this way. If you're not playing melee with a heavy two-handed sword, you're a newbie. You suck. You're not allowed to use magic summons, this, that, this, that. Uh, you f*** all that shit, man. Like, I'm a hardcore gamer. You know I love my games difficult. But, like, play the game however the f*** you want, man. This game even encourages you to do anything you want, whether it's magic, summons, melee, you can play naked, you can not upgrade your guy, you can not level up your guy, you can not do anything, or you can do all of that, or you can do some kind of in-between. Whatever difficulty limitations you want to impose, you're welcome to do that. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that either. The game doesn't really force you to do anything, um, it's just up to the player. So in that way, the game is great, and you can do whatever you want, and as I was playing through the game, it was so... The early game bosses were amazing. I found all these bosses that were chill, that I could learn on, like that opening rat dude, I kicked his ass, and then like they would introduce some enemies that were super OP and I would end up running away from. Uh, I would find some bosses who felt a little out of reach for my super low-level self, so I left, did something else, fought some other bosses. So many fun fights. Uh, mixed in there, especially in the early to mid game. However, um, overall, I feel the bosses in Elden Ring fall flat. And if we're going to talk about, we start with a 10 out of 10 rating for Elden Ring. I'm going to knock off one point for boss fights. Uh, specifically citing overused bosses. They recycle the same boss like Crucible Knight. Those weird little guys. Uh, those like... Those guys, I don't remember their name, but you fight like a hundred of them. And I don't know how much I want to get into it, but I feel the mid to late game bosses really start to suck. The de I don't like the design of these bosses. Um, and I'm going to try to elaborate. So I feel a lot of these bosses are just 
difficult for the wrong reasons. They're way over the top. And some of the issues that I see is that these bosses deal way, way, way too much damage. Not only that, but they have devastating AoE moves that seem like impossible to dodge. Now, I know it's not impossible, but like... You have to spend hours and hours and hours. If you want to beat these guys the melee way, like the uh, not using magic, not using summons, if you want to beat them that way, we're talking hours and hours to memorize these patterns so you're not getting hit because these bosses, you'll have a huge health bar. And these dudes, these motherfuckers are still two-shotting you. They have these AoE moves that seem completely undodgeable. And one boss fight I'm going to go, go to right away is Melania. I think Melania is a dog shit boss. And the whole reason she sucks is because of that one move. I don't know what it's called, but y'all know the move that I'm talking about where she just flails her sword everywhere and she has like lock on traffic tracking like a homing missile and you can't get away from her, dude. I swear to God, um, the only way I could beat Melania was because she either didn't really use that move much or I got super lucky and I was able to interrupt her before she used it. And there were so many bosses that had like these weird design quirks that just seemed ridiculously over the top. And the problem that I saw for me is like, I, you know, like I said before, I love a good challenge. I want I would love to fight all these bosses the melee way, not using summons, not using magic. That is definitely my style. But for some of these bosses, it felt like they designed it so that summons were by far the most preferable choice and if you didn't use summons, it was miserable. So you get locked into this weird situation where fighting them the melee way just isn't fun. It's super tedious. But fighting them with summons is like kind of trivial, so it's not satisfying to kill them either. So I was a little bit torn on some of these bosses where it's like, man, I wish these bosses were more fun so I could fight them uh, the normal way. I don't want to say normal. It's normal to me because I played all the old Dark Souls games and that's just how I played. But, and there were some bosses where I'm like, oh, here, let me try throwing out a summon. We'll see what happens. It was over. It was over, man. So I really felt the boss design just kind of sucked. It felt way over the top for no reason. Uh, a lot of AOE garbage. The final boss was shit. Um, the first phase, I think, was Radagon. I thought it was super dope. And then you fight the giant penis monster. And then you, when you die to the penis monster, it makes you fight Radagon again. But the penis monster is complete bullshit, and he spams, like ridiculous spells where you can't even tell what's going on. You die, you fight Radagon again. So I actually got lucky and beat the penis monster pretty fast. <laughs> penis monster. But I watched other people play and they just wanted to throw their game out the window, you could tell, because they kept dying to the penis monsters. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Elden Beast. They kept dying to the Elden Beast in the most ridiculous ways and you have to fight Radagon again. I don't know what they're thinking with that. So I could go on all day about bosses, but I felt there was a lot of bad, a lot of bad bosses in Elden Ring, uh, and just like, I don't know, just taking a point off for bosses. I think Elden Ring has issues with, uh, should I say, scaling? Is it scaling or like consistency? Elden Ring has a consistency issue where. It's like one second, the enemies make sense, like they're challenging, but it makes sense, right? And then you like walk two feet and there's some dude who kills you in one hit. He's completely impossible. And it'll be like a regular and a regular enemy, right? Uh, there's a lot of weird enemies that are like that. And it's it can be a little frustrating. It's not like the biggest deal, but it does feel like there were various points in the game where it felt like the consistency of the difficulty just kind of was all over the place and didn't really make a whole lot of sense. At the end of the day, Elden Ring is a Souls game through and through. It is built on bullshit, it's made to piss you off, but to reward you for success. Um, I do think the game struggles to find what it... It like gives you all these options, right? Like magic summons, we talked about that. But I feel like the game really struggles to convey or deliver an experience where it's clear what you should be doing and satisfying to complete. Because like I said before, it's like so many times it was either like, this is so over the top, it's not fun to do this melee, or you use a summon and it trivializes it. So I found myself in that awkward situation quite a bit in Elden Ring. By far, my favorite, favorite, favorite part of Elden Ring is exploring, wandering the vast, beautiful countryside, the cliffs, the caves, 
whatever, exploring, finding stuff, finding hidden little bosses and dungeons and stuff. So fucking good. Dude, I would start a brand new character and play through the game again in a heartbeat. I want to do that. I want to do that so badly. I found myself struggling with a lot of stuff in Elden Ring. A lot more than I remember struggling in other Dark Souls games. Um, just because of like... I don't know what it was, but certain things about enemy and boss design just seemed crazy. Didn't it seem like so many bosses and enemies had ridiculously delayed attacks where they would be like... Huh? And they'd have crazy AOE and shit. And um, I think ultimately, I was kind of thinking about this a bit, and I talked about it a bit before, but the damage in Elden Ring makes no sense to me. Like when you have a full health bar and these dudes are chonking you for like 60% in one hit, I just, I don't understand what they were thinking. I feel like even if they reduced it just a little bit, it would completely change the game. It wouldn't trivialize the game. It wouldn't make it easy by any means, but I feel like it would make more sense. A lot of people say get good, but honestly, I feel like they could have done a lot better job finding the balance between fun, satisfying, and still difficult. Because I don't want this game to be easy. That's not what Souls games are. You know I love my hard-ass games, but they could have done better. Melania is a prime example of like a boss that I would not dream of. Like, you know how long it would take me to beat that boss melee? Like fucking like 30 hours probably. Yeah, completely miserable. So you just throw down a Mimic. Even with a Mimic, it was pretty fucking hard, to be honest. <laughs> but, like, it kind of seems like she was designed to be trivialized. But then you stomp her, and it's not really satisfying. You don't get to really experience the boss. So it's kind of weird, right? Other than that, I think the game is great. Like, I just love how you do your own thing. It's chill. It just throws you into the world. Do whatever. World map's awesome. The story is, like, I don't even know. I don't even... I never knew what was happening in the story. It's like, find the Elden Ring, and then... I don't fucking know. But Souls games were never like, you didn't play them for their stories. They were always kind of like that. I think it's cool that this game had such widespread popularity. Um, it was kind of like really crazy. And I think, I think a lot of people were able to jump in and have fun. Like I said, you got to disconnect from the Twitter mob, the online mentality, the toxic hot garbage. And if you just play the game by yourself and do whatever the fuck you want, whether it's magic, summons, uh whatever build you want to do sort of night and flame any sort of stuff i think the game is way more fun when you have little things like that and you just kind of do your own thing i think you could play this game for like a billion hours and never get tired of it so overall what's my score for elden ring i am going to give elden ring an 8.5 out of 10. most of my reduction in points comes to overall balancing and consistency with difficulty when it comes to not only bosses but enemies in the game as well. Souls games are known for being cheap. I don't mind that. It's part of the charm, honestly, but I just feel like they could have done better. But that said, I fucking loved this game. I would love to play it again. Um, I think with some rebalancing of stuff, this game could easily go up to a 9 out of 10. So what do y'all think? Leave your comments below. What do you think of Elden Ring? What do you think of my review? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all a long time. I'll see you later.